gorgeous ones, how are we? I'm just covering up that bit of the light because otherwise it looks like I've got, you know, the Star of Bethlehem behind my ear. My ear. Um, this morning, part two, <laughs> I'm in my cupboard, I'm getting ready for work. Part two of emotional eating. So um, what I guess what I want to say is that <sighs> emotional eating is basically any eating that you do when you're not hungry. So, you know, we, we often have these big terms associated with it and we think it's eating that we do when we're really stressed, but it can be anything, any eating that you do when you're not hungry. So, hello, gorgeous people, how are we? Um, so, one of the really important things is to actually identify that. That's part of it is this awareness. The first thing is always awareness. So when you are eating, now again, we want to make sure that eating doesn't become this demonic process where they're, where they're fearful of eating anything. Food is fuel for our body. It is nutrition and nourishment. It's a wonderful thing. It is um, something that is really enjoyable. But what we need to do is, like a lot of things, is that, you know, too much of a good thing. I think that's where that phrase is probably coined from. So bearing in mind that what we would like to do for the majority of our time is actually be really conscious about the food and our food choices. And that the idea, if you have this idea, primary idea, that food is fuel and nourishment and nutrition. Okay, they're your three things. If that is always at the front, then the thing about food is that we know food is not a stress management technique. Food is not a boredom buster. Food is not entertainment. It's hard because that's actually one of the things that has become part of our culture. Food is entertainment. Think about it. There's cooking shows. There's cooking, shows, cooking bloody shows galore. Um, you know, there's cooking classes, there's, and, and cakes. Cakes haven't just become, you know, I was talking about this with somebody yesterday. A cake, the old CWA cakes were just, you know, beautiful sponge cake uh, brought out on, on the occasion. Um, but now a cake is like a masterpiece. It's, you know, it's it's got 50 layers. It's covered in multiple colored icings. There's, you know, seven different layers inside the cake. A cake is a masterpiece and it's become entertainment. And interestingly, I used to use food a lot for entertainment. I used to watch that Zumbo's, whatever that show is, that basically had these incredible, um, you know, cake creations. And, and so that became sort of what my thoughts were about food. Pairing it right back now, food is no longer part of my entertainment. Yes, I go out to dinner with people. Yes, we go, you know, um, you know, food brings people together. But I guess the thing is that food is no longer the hero of my life. The hero of my life is the people and the food is the sideshow. So that's something to really just take stock of and just have a think. I guess do like a little audit, an audit of your life. Is food the hero of your life and the people are the sideshow? Are you using food for entertainment? Are you using it for boredom? And then, of course, there is that idea of the emotional eating, using it for stress and distress. We'll talk a bit more about that tomorrow. Tomorrow, I've got a great talk for you on your language around food and what it, how that actually subconsciously sort of activates your thoughts on it. But that's today's job, darlings. I'd like you to do a little audit on your relationship with food and when you eat it. Bye for now.